So we're in one of the seawater rooms at UCSB. Uh, this is one of the rooms we do research in here in the labs. This room is not as nice and it's actually something special because instead of having to use aquariums or other type of water that's been stored, we can actually pull water in directly from the ocean to the labs. And so the organisms we keep in here are very close to their natural environment, ambient temperature, and the same ocean chemistry, which is very hard to recreate in a lab. So we've got several experiments running right now. Um, the one we talked to you about today is the experiment looking at the non sub effects of sea stars on whelks, um, or a type of snail, and how it impacts their feeding. So the first thing you'll realize is this may not look like what you thought a lab would look like when you came in. Um, there's no one in white coats, there's no one dressed up with a pocket protector, and there's a lot of sprinkler tubing and other type of things. And this is actually what the research we do looks like. So as I said, this big grow through pipe up here that you'll see running down the wall brings in fresh seawater all the time. So it means a lot of the more complicated things such as pumps, filters, um, a lot of that we don't have to worry about for some experiments. We don't have to consider it because we have that water coming in. So some of the experiments I've been conducting actually work with this basic PVC tubing to construct a water flow. And the tough water containers to house the organisms. So to give you an example, this experiment right here, the top containers contain sea stars. Um, and as you can see, by giving an example in this one, the sea stars feed on the mussels that are in here, but they're unable to touch anything that's in the bottom container. But it's a flow through, so there's water coming out of the bottom, which then enters these bottom containers. And what that allows us to do is see how the presence of this sea star, separate from its feeding ability, impacts the prey. And what we have in the bottom containers, as you can, get, as you can kind of see, are some whelks. You can see the feet of the whelks pressing against the side, and mussels. And what this allows us to do is over time measure how the sea star impacts how many mussels the whelks eat, and also how much the whelks grow. So by varying either the number of sea stars are in this top container, or how long they're there, we can begin to get a better understanding of how non-consumptive effects of sea stars may impact, quote, feeding, quote, behavior, and also may impact the community at large through these effects.